linked genes versus unlinked genes. When we're talking about linked genes versus unlinked genes, we're really comparing the relationship between two genes at two different loci. When two genes are linked, it means that these two genes are on the same chromosomes. Unlinked genes or non-linked genes means that these two genes are separated and are located on two different chromosomes. A figurative example over here, gene A and gene B are linked in this picture because they are located on the same chromosome, but at different location of the chromosomes. To the right is an example of a pair of unlinked genes because gene A and gene B are on two different chromosomes, and these two chromosomes are non-homologous to each other. So now, let's look at the first scenario in which there are two genes that are unlinked. A parent cells over here contains gene A and gene B on two separate chromosomes. Each chromosome has a homo homolog that contains a recessive versions of gene A and gene B. After meiosis, we're going to have an equal chance of four different gametes. Big A, Big B, Big A, Little B, Little A, Big B, and little a, little b. This is because of independent assortment of the homologous chromosomes regardless of crossing over. The arrangement of the chromosomes during metaphase 1 of meiosis is random, so I could have big A with little b or little a with big b, and the chains are random. So if you get big A, you don't necessarily have to get big b, you can get little b together with big A as well. So after meiosis, a cell might get chromosomes with big A and pair up with either chromosomes that has big B or little b. So now let's do a non-linked dihybrid cross. The male is going to produce four of these gametes by random chance with equal probability, and the female, just like the male, is also going to produce four gametes with different genotypes by random chance and with equal probability and I list out all the results of the fertilizations in the Punnett square. Here we're assuming that the AB genes follow a single Mendelian dominant recessive inheritance pattern, and you're going to get a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio uh, for non-linked genes, in which 9 represents double dominant, 3 re represents 1 dominant, 1 recessive, another 3 represents 1 recessive, 1 dominant, and 1 represents double recessive. This is the ratio when both parents are heterozygous for both genes and the genes are not linked. Now, let's look at situations when both A and B are linked, which means they are located on the same chromosome. But we're going to assume that there is not going to be any crossing over between the chromatids of the homologous chromosomes. During meiosis, if the gamete receive a big A, it will definitely receive a big B, because the big A and big B genes are located on the same chromosomes and there's not going to have any crossing over. The four possible gametes, after the meiosis, you're going to get big A with big B and little a with little b, because there's no crossing over. The yellow is going to represent the gamete that contains big A and big B genotype together, and the green represents little a and little b together. Let's set up the dihybrid cross again, this time for gene A and gene B with no crossing over, but they are linked. You can see that because of these possible gametes, you're going to get a perfect 3 to 1 ratio. 3 out of 4 is going to be double dominant, and 1 out of 4 is going to be double recessive phenotype. This is because the big A is always associated with big B in the gametes, and little a is going to be associated with little b in the gametes. Because they are in the same package, they are connected, that's why it's linked. And there's no crossing over, so the gap, the genes doesn't get exchanged, right? Your gamut choice is only restricted to big A, big B, or little a, little b. And of course, the fertilization has to be random. Then the ratio will be 3 to 1. Now let's look at the scenario in which both gene A and gene B are linked, but crossing over can happen. Crossing over is a random event in which the homologous chromosome exchanges the gene segment, but this event happens quite rarely. So most of the time you're still going to get big A with big B and little a with little b. This is most of the time. But during but when crossing over do happen, 
the big A allele will be on the same chromatids as the little b, and the big B will be on the same chromatid as the little a, right? Because the gene segment for the chromosomes in between the homologous chromosomes are going to flip around like this. So now the big A could be with big little b, but if there's no crossing over, the big A will be still associated with big B, and the little a will be associated with little b. And those that does have crossing over, they are going to have big A with little b or little a with big b. This occurs rarely, so you have low quantity. So now let's look at the dihybrid cross between two heterozygous for both gene A and gene B. Most of the male are going to have the gametes that is big A, big B, or little a, little b. Very little quantity will be of the recombinant gam gametes. Same as female, during meiosis, they're going to have a majority of the gametes being big A, big B, or little a, little b. With rare chance, they're going to get big A, little b, and little a, big b gametes. So we're going to set up the Punnett square and do fertilization. A majority of the offspring are going to be double dominant and double recessive, with the green being the offspring that contains the phenotype with double dominance for gene A and gene B, and yellow being double recessive. But if the male and female do have recombinant gametes, right, and if you combine the recombinant gametes through the process of fertilizations, you will still occasionally get a double dominant phenotype, with uh, being marked as green. But notice that another pattern will occur in which you have one of the genes expressing dominant phenotype and another gene expressing recessive phenotype. In here, the pink is marked as gene A being dominant and gene B being recessive phenotype. And for the purple, it marks gene A being the recessive phenotype and gene B being the dominant phenotype. So the number of this offspring is a result from the recombinant gametes, and the frequency in which observe all these recombinant gametes will be very low as compared to the non-recombinant offspring. So if we look at the double dominant phenotype to the double recessive phenotype, the ratio will be close to 3 to 1. It's not exactly 3 to 1, but it's close to 3 to 1. But if you compare all four phenotypes, right, you compare the green to the yellow, to the purple and to the pink, you will notice that the pink and the purple, because they come from the recombinant gametes that occurs rarely, you rarely will get the single dominant recessive recombinant offspring. So if you observe this kind of ratio coming out from a dihybrid cross between two genes that are linked with crossing over, uh, then the ratio should be something like 3 to 1 to very low number and to very low number of single dominant recessive phenotype. With that, I hope I clarified the idea between linked genes and non-linked genes. Have a good day.